Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shavi Zane, and I'm coming on to bring a message for you all, the chosen specifically. Now, I happen to stumble across a message by one, uh, you know, a spiritual teacher who I admire very much by the name of Billy Carson. Um, and it was a suggested video on my YouTube where he was speaking on what's going on out there in Israel and whatnot. He was bringing his opinion forward. But as he went further into the message, he began to say that he personally does not believe that there's such thing as chosen seed. And so I agreed with some of the things he was talking about, but that part I did not agree with at all because I know for a fact that I'm a chosen seed. And so I spoke to the most high in my spiritual team and they guided me to some things that I want to share with you all at this time. So I asked the most high to just show me, just guide me and I'm just going to go with it. So what I heard in my mind was natural selection. And so natural selection is a mechanism of evolution where organisms um, that are more adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and pass on genes that aid in that survival, okay? So just like, you know, certain animals, certain species are able to survive depending on how well they're able to adapt to the environment. Are they prey? Do they know how to, you know, avoid becoming prey? Uh, are they able to adapt with the climate changes and things of that nature is going to determine the longevity of their species moving down the line. But also consider that the DNA begins to shift and express itself differently so that when it does, when that or that species begins to procreate, whatever, you know, is coming through that species, if it's meant for it to survive long term, the DNA is going to adapt to make, you know, subtle adjustments so that it can survive this environment. And so what the most high and my spiritual team guided to me, uh, guided me to after that was DNA expression. And so for me, when I was in school, I dropped out in a ninth grade. I did go back to become a registered nurse, got my GND, GED and all of that. And so I learned a little bit about DNA expression, just enough to pass my courses, okay? Because I was never very interested in science like that. I, I'd say I'm more interested now than I was back then. But either way, I looked into DNA expression because I needed a refresher's course and still a lot of it went through one ear and right out the other. But what stood out was the things that my spiritual team wanted me to pay attention to. First, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the terminology that's used when DNA expression, the process of DNA expression is explained. So the terminology, just the first word is DNA expression, expression. Keep that in mind. The other one is transcription, messenger RNA, what's standing out is messenger, translation, initiation, codes, also known as codons, and termination. Now, these words stood out to me a lot because they all share a very common theme. Expression, trans transcription, messenger, translation. All of these have a common denominator and that deals with communication. It deals with words. Okay. So let's just go back a little bit. When we're talking about the most high mother and father, the, the most high is energy. Okay. A very high vibrational energy. And the most high is consciousness on a level that we can't even really understand. That's why you can't put everything of who the most high is in one text. That's foolishness. But the most high is expression, is resonance, is energy. And so the most high, when creation happens, even the biblical text from its minor understanding, the small understanding that you know, these people might have had of the most high, even the biblical text speaks on the most high speaking life into existence. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament. Let there be a division between night and day. Let there be man. Let there be all of these things, right? So speaking life into existence, that is the expression of the most high. So we know that words and thoughts is an energy that creates our 
environment. It creates our perception. It creates our experience here, words and thoughts. So now interpretation as well. So now when we're looking at DNA expression, all of these terms that gives you an understanding of the process of DNA expression deals with some form of communication. Translation. The definition of translation is processing of, the processing of or translating one word into another. The next word that they use for expression of DNA is messenger. Remember messenger RNA. What is a messenger? When I saw messenger, I automatically heard Messiah. That's what my spiritual team uh, showed me. Messenger, a person who carries a message, right? Then we have transcription, which is another word to define how DNA expresses itself. A written or printed representation of something, still dealing with words and expression now. Then we go into expression, which is a process of making known one's thoughts or feelings. All of these words, these definitions that's used to show you what the DNA expression process looks like deals with some form of communication. And as you know, when you watch these videos, they have DNA, all of these different letters, right? To separate this from that, all of these different letters, letter variations. So letters are very, very important when it comes to DNA. Then we have other terms such as initiation. So the definition of initiation is the act of admitting someone into a secret society or a group. So it's giving someone access because they have earned that access. So initiation is also a term that's used to define the expression of DNA. Then you have termination. I started, you know, I was like, okay, what are y'all, why are y'all telling me to write down termination? Because there's, I, I looked it up and there's two definitions of termination. One being the end of something. The other being the final letter or letters of a syllable. So even termination has some connection to words, the final letter or letters of a syllable. So now here we have all of these words that has this common theme of communication. And we're talking about, we begin, my spiritual team began with the term natural selection. So then it takes you into, well, is there such thing as a chosen seed? Absolutely there is. Because when we get off into the expression of DNA, you got to understand that everybody's DNA is not the same, obviously. That's how you're able to differentiate one person from the next because of their DNA. And also consider that based on these people who have researched it, that DNA, most of it is so-called dormant, but there's a reason for that. Now, DNA is housed in water. We make up of mostly water, but DNA sits in water. And so it takes me back to the expression of DNA. What determines the expression of DNA? Well, the environment plays a major role in how DNA expresses itself or whether or not it's going to express itself because it might just decide to lay dormant because it could be certain, oh, that's another word, codes. Codes, which is deal dealing with the codons, right? Codes is, you only have access to codes when you have a key. You can only gain access when you have a key. So there's only specific people that are chosen by the most high who have access, not just access, but when they do gain access, there's certain things within the DNA information, because that's all the DNA is housed. It, it, that's what the DNA possesses. That's what DNA is. It's information. The DNA, one strand of DNA, when stretched out, can go for miles and miles and miles. So we're talking about a library, millions of libraries in one strand of DNA. And these ain't no libraries that's full of Goosebumps and Barney and, and Sesame Street. No, these are libraries that's full of the Akashic Records the emerald tablets, the, you know, ancient wisdom that's only locked away and put, that's locked away in, 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 in vaults where the only people who have access to it is the ones that stole it, 
they buried it or they give access to people who have a certain amount of money or resources that, you know, they feel are worthy of reading these things. That's the type of information, but even far greater that is housed in the DNA of the chosen seed. So this takes me back when we're talking about DNA being housed in water. I did a message about this maybe almost two years ago now about this, uh, this doctor, Dr. Masura Emoto. He's one of a few who did an experiment on water. It was a water experiment. And the water, the, the experiment was when you place water, when water molecules are exposed to different emotions, the, monec the molecular structure of the water begins to change, right? So the emotions, some of the water, he exposed it to very high vibrational music. And the high vibrational music would be the expression of peace, gratitude, love. The frequencies also made a difference, but also the words that was being expressed through the music. And so that mu that those water molecules were frozen. He looked at it through a, um, a microscope and he saw that they formed these beautifully perfectly symmetrical um, snowflake looking type of uh, crystals or whatnot. Beautiful. All of them had different shapes depending on if it was a message of peace, a message of love, a message of gratitude, but all of them turned out very, very beautiful. When he played the music that was evil, that was full of hatred, that was putting people down, sadness, when he froze those uh, water molecules, you looked at it, it looked like globs of just, uh, and, and even when I was looking at some of the globs, I was able to see through my spiritual eyes like demons. I could see that, okay? And so when you consider DNA expression, which is another way of communication, and you know that it's housed in water and that your body is mostly comprised of water, your thoughts, what you say, what you take in, what you listen to, the dominant energy of that is going to make a huge difference in what your DNA is living in. What is the environment of your DNA? What you're taught, what society conditions you to believe, okay? These things, how you feel on a regular basis, how you think about yourself, all of this plays a major factor in what, how your DNA expresses itself and whether or not it's going to, because it just might decide to lay dormant because the environment is not conducive to its expression. It's like, it ain't even worthy of my expression because I'm not going to give birth to all of this knowledge and wisdom just for it to be, you know, cast before swine. Okay. Or just for it to be, you know, laid up in the cesspool of, of toxicity. So the DNA might not even express itself. So let's just go back before you awakened as a chosen seed. Cause a lot of you that are guided to my channel, you understand that you're a chosen seed. I understood that I was a chosen seed once I awakened, not before, but once I awakened. And so when you, before you awakened, that's when you likely had certain thoughts that were low vibrational. You said things that were low vibrational. You hung around people that expressed things in a way that was very low vibrational. You listened to things. You watched things. You did things that was low vibrational. And so therefore your DNA, all of that information was there, but you did not have access to them codes, codons. You did not have access, access denied. But it was not until your initiation, which is another word, another term that is used Scientific term that is used for the expression of DNA. It was not until your initiation, which was the definition of, the, of an initiation, the act of admitting someone into a secret society or group. You did not have admittance. The Most High was not going to give you access. Access was denied. You are cut off. You No, you ain't coming into these pearly gates because you're too dirty, right? The energy was too low vibrational. You had to go through initiation, which took, took you through an entire transformation, a death and a rebirth. You had to die to the old version of you and come back reborn, renewed, 
free of all of these conditionings, the chain, the generational curses, all of these things that held you bound. You had to strip naked and bare all. You had to expose yourself. You had to be real with yourself and honest with yourself about who you are. You had to go through the fire. You took a lot of losses. You had to come into an understanding that the material things is not what made you. I mean, the initiation process was a taxing process, but you still got initiated. You made it through. And so because of this, now your energy is much more highly vibrational. You understand the importance of having positive thoughts, letting your dominant thoughts be positive thoughts. That doesn't mean that you might still have negative thoughts sometimes, but as soon as you do, you alchemize and transmute that energy because you recognize that sitting in that energy too long, things start to get murky, right? No different than you know, you want to keep the energy, the emotions flowing freely, right? So it's no different than a pond where there's no wind. Over time, things begin to settle and collect on top of that pond where it starts to look real murky and, and yucky. And you don't want to be in that, right? Same thing with your DNA. So you begin after you went through your initiation process and you awakened as a chosen seed, you understood the importance of maintenance. So now you're diligent about your maintenance, but what is greater than that? How do you know that you're a chosen seed? Is because the moment that you begin to awaken and your environment changed externally as well as internally, those DNA codes begin, you gain access to that information, those, those libraries. And not all of them, you still have yet to unlock all of them because if you unlock all of them, I, I don't even know if you'd be able to exist here on planet earth. But you begin to unlock many of them, gaining access to those codes and that DNA, that library of information. And now you have a deeper understanding of life. You have an understanding of people. You can look at a person and know the type of energy that they possess, the type of energy that they're in, the type of thoughts that they're having. You can touch a person. You can, it's like you have a strong sensitivity, but in a good way where your interpretation, how you interpret things is just totally different. You're able to look at a tree and understand it, its existence here. You're able to listen to a bird and understand the messages, eventually being able to translate. You're able to time travel and dimension jump. You're able to interpret your dreams. You're able to, you're an empath. You have all of these clairs, all of these spiritual gifts. You have knowledge about things that you don't even know how the hell you got knowledge of. And it's not because you researched it, it's because you access the library that was housed within your DNA. But you don't get access to it unless you go through the initiation process. Now consider this. The reason why I'm saying there's such thing as a chosen seed is because you could very well have a chosen seed over here and one who is not chosen. Both people have a vested interest in becoming the best version of themselves, right? So both people are eliminating unnecessary things, eliminating their carnal nature, you know, dying to the unhealthy aspect of their ego, practicing gratitude, having more positive thoughts, taking in different types of diets or making sure that they take care of their body better, thinking better about themselves. Both people, right? Chosen seed and the one that's not chosen. The difference is, when the person that's not chosen begins to vibrate higher, their DNA begins to unlock and there's certain things that they'll unlock within their DNA, right? But their library is not, it doesn't possess the same type of information. The information that the chosen seed possess, you've done all of this work just as they have. When you unlock the information that is in these DNA codes, in these codons, when you gain access to this, the information is explosive. The information wows you. You'd be like, how the hell did I know that? How am I able to understand things from such ancient times when I never read about it? I never heard about it. You know you was conditioned to believe one thing, but you shared that. And now suddenly you're able to channel messages. Suddenly you have access to things that that person who was not chosen does not have access to. It doesn't mean that their work is in vain though. Because even those people who are not chosen, you're here as the chosen seed to conduct a specific assignment. That's what the chosen seed is all about. You have access to this information within your DNA because you are been you have been given the assignment to be a messenger of some sort, 
a messiah. Remember, you're going to either be a translator. The translator is the one who takes one word and you're able to translate it into another way of understanding. So in other words, you are very good at reading something or gaining the understanding of something and translating it to, to uh, uh, someone where, way, where it's more simplified, where it's more easily understood. As the transcriber, you may be the one who has the assignment of writing things down. You might be a scholar. You might be the one that's, you know, constantly putting things, documenting things so that people can go back and read it later on and, and pass it down to their children. And then as the messenger, which is a person that comes with a message, you could be that person that you have the message with you at all times. Everywhere you go, you understand that it's your assignment to pass on the message. Either way, all of it deals with some form of expression which is DNA expression. You do not possess this library of information in your DNA just for the sake of saying, woo, look at me, I have all of this knowledge. I'm chosen, you're not, whoop-de-doo, too bad for you. That's not what this thing is all about. And of course, you know that as a chosen seed because you naturally come with an energy of humility and gratitude for the fact that you are chosen. The chosen seed, we built different. We're not in our ego with this information, but we do possess the information. And everybody has a different form of translation, transcription, you know, expression. It's not always going to look the same, right? Because not all DNA is the same because otherwise we wouldn't be able to differentiate one from the next. You possess a certain amount of information as a chosen seed. The next one over there possesses a different information and so on and so forth. But either way, all of this, is an access to the library of information from the most high mother and father who is all, okay? Who is all. And so you don't have this just for a chest thump, okay? Or to blow your head up. And so I think Billy had the right intentions, but he's also looking at it from an angle where the chosen see we haven't, not all of us have come into realization of our purpose yet to the point where we have built the new kingdom and we're able to show what the true chosen seed looks like when we are in our kingdom and we've been given back our throne. Those people over there who call themselves chosen, Revelations 3 verses 9, those people who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, right? That's what the scripture says. Those people who call themselves the chosen have given chosen seed, the true, the original chosen seed, a bad name. Because now people think that, okay, if you call yourself chosen, then automatically you think you're better than everybody. You think that other people out here don't deserve to live and this, that, and the third. Listen, I don't believe in much of the things that's in biblical text. It does possess some wisdom. There are things that are in there that tells you what the enemy is up to, what their agenda is. That's why I read it. But at the same time, you have to understand that when they're saying that the chosen seed, okay, when we get into our position and when, when the kingdom, when the head becomes the tail and we receive our inheritance and birthright again, that we're going to chain people up and we're going to give them what they gave us. It's not even in our hearts and in our DNA. It's not in our spirit, in our soul. We're not even built like that. Now, uh, would we step in and stop them if those who still want to operate in wickedness chose to take each other out? No, do what you got to do. Natural selection. Eliminate yourself. But it's not in us as a chosen seed to be able to take someone and say, oh, you look like this. Your skin color is that. So I'm about to take you by your hair. Let me go ahead and, you know, slice and dice. You know, it's not in us to do that. And so there is a certain perception that some people might have that maybe Billy has, you know, um, gotten based on what he has seen the false chosen do. It doesn't look the same for the true chosen seed. The true chosen seed, our assignment is to be the messengers because we possess 
a whole lot of information. I truly believe that Billy is also a chosen seed, but he chooses not to just he chooses not to subscribe to that terminology. But he too possesses a whole lot of information because it was in his DNA from the time that he was formed. And it stretched, it had to, you know, it, it, it extended out to him because not everybody in his lineage, or I'm, let me not just speak on him, not everybody in the chosen seeds lineage, right? You got all of these, uh, you know, mother, father, grandparents, great grandparents, and it stretches all the way back, you know, to the beginning of time. You were the one that was meant to awaken in the age of Aquarius to where you would have access to the information. Not saying that other people in your lineage didn't have it in their DNA codes, but they would not be given access to the information because they was not chosen to have the energy. They would not be able, they would not create the right environment for it to express itself, for the DNA to express itself, or even for them to express the message. Many are called, but few are chosen. Not everybody is going to is willing to take on the assignment of being a Messiah, of being a part of Christ's consciousness. Not everybody will take on the assignment. There are some people who would, you know, there are some who would gain access to this type of information and they will be selfish with it. They will hold it to themselves because they would not want other people to know these things. That's not a chosen seed. A chosen seed is chosen for an assignment. And that assignment always deals with some form of communication to help to awaken others. And that communication is through energy. So you can be an energy healer. You can be a spiritual teacher. You can be whatever you want to call yourself, but you have to translate, transcribe, express, be a messenger of some sort. And that's why all of those terms are used for the expression of DNA. Make no mistake, the assignment is a great assignment. And only a certain, a select few are prepared for that. And like I said, it's, it's, you're bringing the message forward because the whole objective is to raise the vibration of all of humanity, no matter what color the people are, right? All of humanity, the objective is to bring the truth forward so that they too can rise higher. But the fact of the matter is, no matter how high they raise their vibrations, they will not be able to articulate or communicate or gain access to certain information unless it is written and encoded in their DNA. And so this is where you're able to differentiate one from the next. Everybody must raise their vibrations if you want to be able to survive the shift that is happening energetically in the age of Aquarius. You have free will. Those who do not, they're going to fall with Babylon. Those who do, whether you are chosen seed or not, will be able to rise higher as the new kingdom, a new frequency, a new energy is being established. That's it and that's all. It's not about arrogance. It's not about cockiness. It's not about being better than anyone else. It's about fulfilling a assignment that only a select group of people are able to fulfill because it is within their DNA. The information is accessible to them if that select group of people do the work, go through the initiation process, transform, go through the death and the rebirth and do what's necessary to maintain that energy so that they can access and unlock more codes to express and to decode more information. So that's my message for you all. I hope that it more, I know it made sense. I know it made sense to those of you out there who are chosen I had to respond to that because I know a lot of people that watch my channel, watch Billy's channel. I know Billy don't know a damn thing about me, but shout out to Billy. I love you, but I really do believe that that part of his message needed to be addressed. Okay. So I love you all. Please be sure to leave your comment below, like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all next time.